Welcome back uh, to this A27 Class A amplifier build, about 50 watts ish. Got the uh, got another one of the boxes that this bloke made me. I've got two the same size, so things are going to be a bit tight, tighter than I would have liked. But using a bigger box, I've got two different size boxes. Using a bigger box is a waste because they'll do for something else. So anyway, here's the box. Cut a bit of uh, two mil alley sheet out, all marked out. The uh, where do you call it? Output transform will go right at the back. Uh, blah blah blah. I've got some of these bases off eBay, as I do not like those ones. They take up too much freaking room. Which is a shame. I've got loads. I've got quite a few, thanks to Joe in Australia, and I bought a few myself. So yeah, one, two, three, four. Bish bash bosh. Uh, these uh, UX five bases are in great shape, but hey ho. Another one there. As I said, it's going to be tight. Would have liked to give more room for the 807s. 80, I've, I've measured it all out. I've gone around with a compass and everything. We've got air holes. So now I've just got to drill it out. On the bench, we've got a prototype for the driver's stage and all the rest of it, which I will go into detail. I'll go into more detail later with a schematic. So there's all the pilot holes drilled. I best stop up this battery, it's going. Here you that's took me all day, but it's ready for wiring and obviously we've got to stick jacks and inputs and outputs on the uh, wooden thingy. That's mounted on there, it's little hat is over here, sucking up some poison to get the um, old paint off. Uh, polished it a bit to try and get little scratches out, it doesn't matter what I do, I always get little scratches somewhere. Here we are the next day, so as you can see we've got the heater wiring in, thin wire going to this one here and there, it's only got to provide 900 milliamps and a big thick bugger here to provide these two and that one, hope you with me. I going to give a combination of cathode bias and fixed bias a go. So if I put these 100 ohm resistors in, that should give us about 10 volts, maybe a bit less. And I've just been looking what capacitors I've got, and I've got these Sprague, will they fit just about 160U, which gives us a cut-off frequency of 9.8. 9.9 .9 Hertz, about 10 Hertz. Uh, I was looking for a hundred, what do you call it, a hundred uh, microfarads, which gives us about 15 Hertz cutoff frequency. Got these, these are airy, very old. Doublier, uh, and I've got some even worse ones than that. Usually with, uh, where do you call it, cathode bias capacitors on an output stage, you'd have them a lot higher than this, 63 volts maybe. But because we've got a combination of fixed bias, I think we'll be okay. Com you know, a combination of fixed bias and cathode bias. The reason I sort of... Uh, jumped on this idea is because hopefully this will give us a little bit of um, where do you call it we won't have to worry about matching so much and we're in class A anyway so this is what you usually do with class A cathode bias you don't usually have fixed bias in class A I think uh, I have worked out the input and driver which I will deal with it another time so all oh right and then the other thing I need to just cover while I'm waffling on so we've got this is obviously our ground 
it isn't a loop because it, there's a, a cut underneath there as it were so it's just whoop, goes like that and then we've got this which will fit there and then this is basically for the fixed bias to each pair 10k where do you call it 10k pot that means we can balance each pair output pair if you with me hope that makes sense right I shall um, crack on oh one thing I found I got these uh, really nice standoffs ceramic standoffs on eBay cheap I usually like go for stupid money but I managed to get them for under a fiver I think ten of them right I shall get them in and then at some point I shall build this stage here and then we shall test the bogger or later well here we are a few days later and uh, I haven't filmed as I've been going along as I meant to uh, just sort of got stuck into it really so I think the last clip I just had the cathode resistors and cathode capacitors on the 807s as I mentioned I'm going to go in this instance for a combination of cathode bias and fixed bias so the 100 ohm resistors on each 807's cathode should give us about 10 volts um, that is you know lifting the cathode up about 10 volts and then we've got about 20 volts something like that fixed bias on top of that to bias the 807's at about 80 milliamps this, this is all very tentative I mean this is just an experiment this is really um, but I have tried this before on a prototype and it worked okay and as you see we've got a couple of pots each one of these pots is a 10k linear pot preset pot thingy and we've got basically We've got our, it's about 20 volts, 20, 30 volts, say, going into the wiper of the pot, and then each sort of end of the pot, if you're with me, is connected to the grids of 1807. This means that hopefully we can bias, um, not bias, uh, not, not match, what's the word? Balance. We can balance each. 807 pair sorry I remember to think here it's at the end of the day I've been really busy as you can see so that's the idea so a bit of cathode bias because we're in class A hopefully and a bit of fixed bias so we should get a bit more power but with some of the not having to match the output uh, sorry not having to match the output valves with cathode bias I'll go into more detail of that when I get uh, a chance another day We've got, basically it looks like a loop here, we've got a sort of bus that looks like it goes in a loop, it doesn't, It's there's a break in it there. So basically it's a long wire, long ground bus coiled back on itself with the gain stage and the long tail pair driver at the far end of it so that the heavy currents going through the output stages don't affect it if you with me I'm sure I've mentioned that before and then moving this way over here <coughs> we've got some sort of heat problems and craziness going off in that we've got a this is a DET 20 2C22 um, triode valve one single triode in a bottle in an octal sort of bottle thingy I was going to use a 6SN7 paralleled but in the end there was no real benefit to doing that apart from double the current going into the driver stage so we basically get a gain of about 18 at the moment hopefully well that's what the tests show anyway 18 getting on 19 which 
as the 2C22-20 is basically half a 6SN7 or a 6J5 I think with a gain of 20 then that's about right and basically instead of a, a uh, anode resistor we've got a constant current source or an active load in this instance it's uh, basically a little pot there, a little preset there and that's for altering the current we've got a 2N2907A PMP little transistor and an MPSA92 I will show you the schematic in a minute that's sort of driving the anode uh, whatever you like to call it sorry my brain's going again as per bloody usual right so that's all cushy uh, cathode resistor as per normal we've got a bit of a sort of temporary setup here because I'm still I want to mess about with the uh, DC conditions to get the best take on monitor distortion that's then AC coupled over to a 6BL7 which is a mighty double triode I think each one is capable of about when they're both driven about 5 watts so more than sufficient to drive 4807s. That is also running off a constant current sink which is here. I mounted it up this way so that I can adjust it. And we've basically got a BC549 and an MGE340 uh, which you know is the, the sink and a few of the resistors and bits and bobs, Zener diode. That will give us, hopefully, really good AC balance out. As I say, a lot of this is sort of temporary. A lot of it is sort of permanent, but there's a bit of temporariness going off as well. And then we've just got a couple of resistors I've just tacked in here for the moment. Uh, resistors? Capacitors, even. Just to test it. So first thing I'm going to do is test the uh, DEC22C22. Before all this, wandering over here, loads of paperwork, loads of research. So originally I started out with the idea of using a differential pair direct couple to two 6S4As, which are mighty triodes again, as cathode followers. Tried that, didn't quite work out. Getting DC coupled... I mean you get yes you get improved stability but it, it proved a bit tricky and really the 6S4A at capable of 8.5 watts is overkill for this application so as you can see lots of calculations lots of load lines lots of uh, tentative scanning uh, scanning tentative drawing schematics here we are, what's this one? This is another 6S4A, so I really looked into that, but it was problematic to try and get it to work. And this is our schematic in a minute, we'll go there in a minute. What did I also try? What the hell is this thing here? I want to try and think what the bloody hell this is. I don't know what this is. I just found this early on when I was looking through um, all my paperwork, and I have no idea actually what that is. <coughs> and then this is the original idea I tried with the, this is a 6S4A, 6S4A cathode follower with an ECC81 differential pair, differential signals going in. I will return to this differential common mode rejection malarkey in another video. It's, I'm trying to keep this a bit short and that was basically driven from A constant current source but in this case I was using I was trying out a ZTX604 which is a Darlington which should give us a really high AC impedance tried that didn't work mainly because I had the wrong resistors on the uh, cathodes there uh, what's this one this is even more uh, tentative where do you call it at first I was going to try what the hell was I trying here? I don't know, I was trying something. This is looking at Broski's bloody site. He tends to get a bit complicated though, he does. Bless him. 
This one again looks to me like a long tail pair, 6SL7, God knows. So let's have a look at the actual schematic. We'll get there in the end, don't worry. So as mentioned, here we go. Like I said, we've got a few bits of rubbing out and everything. This is all tentative, but the I have tried this out. I built a couple of prototypes and they do work rather well. So as you can see, this is our constant current source because it's actually uh, sourcing current to the DEC20, 2C22. These are just some tentative resistor values we've got a Zena basically fixing the base of this 2N2907A which basically fixes our emitter oh, it is emitter, I haven't drawn the emitter in there that fixes our emitter current and that is basically coupled to this MPSA 92 not a 42 got the usual sort of malarkey going off this end, cathode resistor in two bits plus a cathode capacitor and then that is coupled over here blah 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 we've got a similar sort of thing here constant current sink this time usual zener bias zener diode biasing the base but I've made this more complicated in that we've got another transistor down here similar to this one but in reverse if you were me and when I had all this tested and going the other day on this is the bias bloody uh, malarkey here the bias resistor network for the 807s I was all this is capable of driving the 807s to twice what we need so we need to drive each 807 grid by about 30 volts this, is, this should be capable of doing about 60 volts RMS. Right, I shall show up waffling, go and have a sip of beer because my mouth's going dry, and then we shall try this out, and hopefully nothing will blow up. I've checked it and rechecked it, but you never know. Well, I just powered it up, and basically, instead of getting 150 odd volts that we should get on the anode, I was getting about 8 volts. So obviously something wrong there, so let's pull it apart, Grandad. And so the weirdness begins. So I've got two identical Fluke 25s. Okie dokie. Now then, these black leads, both of them, are going to ground, albeit at different points. So let's try this one first. Uh, so I'll just put that down. It's going to call me a bloody lion now. So that's going over to ground. I've checked the ground. We've got ground. And I shall put it on this 470... Where do you call it? 470k resistor. It's telling me it's 500. Yeah, you see that? Look, that's... I'm waggling it. Okay, now then, if I then use this other meter, it's telling me it's, oops, sorry, 9 meg. So what the freddy the fuck is going off there? I've measured it out of circuit. Right, just to prove um, I'm not like, you know, We've got nothing going up with the grounds. So tip there. Ah! Okay, that's telling me we haven't got... Oh no, because I've just took it off your peanut. Right, let's put it on there. <sighs> it is a bit late for this. A bit late in the day. Right, there we go. Sorry. Frame you properly. 5 ohms. Uh, sorry, 0.5 ohms. Put that on there. Okay, do seven mag. Right, we've got our two grounds from our meters, more or less in the same spot. 
And that's reading five. But I'm jiggling that about. Alright, so it looks like we've got an iffy resistor. Let me change that and then see what the crack is. So why could that be making a difference? If we, if this is reading about 10 meg, then it's biasing the grid, not at zero volts. And what will it be doing it? God knows. It's going to be wrong anyway. So basically we won't have the 5 volts VGK that we're supposed to have. So let's try changing that and see if that makes any difference. Well here we are the next morning, all bright and bushy tailed and all the rest of it. Yesterday we was getting some weirdness with this stage. <coughs> and then we've got like 150 odd volts here and about 8 volts here. And there was also some, also some weirdness with this um, grid leak resistor. I can't find any weirdness this morning with a grid leak resistor, however, that tells me that resistor measures 1.9 meg. Okay, that's just a bloody weird 10 meter. It should be 10 ohm. So obviously that is FUK'd. Replace that and we should be right. Right, with that just sort of bodged in there, we're getting normal readings now. 4.7 on the cathode. on the anode that's all good we should be getting zero volts down there yeah 0 0.1 that's about right so now we shall what shall we do we shall stick a signal in one end if I can get in there I need to tidy that up first stick a signal in one end and see what we get out of the other Okie dokie, one nice clean sine wave at 18.8 .8 volts RMS out. Let's have a look at distortion for a laugh. 0.7% distortion, uh, so that's a gain of 18.8 .8, isn't it? Uh, which is more than sufficient for what we want. It, uh, this, let's have a look at the frequency response. I think that will fall off a bit at higher um, uh, frequencies. Frequency 20. Yeah, it's gone down a little bit. 17.3, so... Yeah, we've lost a bit. It's not much. Yeah. Um, total harmonic distortion has gone up. Now let's see if we can clean that up by altering the um, cathode bias. I don't think it will, but... It's lower in it. No. No, that makes it go higher if we should be at 5.2 actually. That's about right. Yeah, it goes up if we increase the cathode bias. Uh, blah blah blah. I don't think messing about with the current Warhol Piper frequency. 20 hertz. That's gone right down. So at 20 hertz. Lost quite a bit of uh, amplitude, so yeah, we've got to change these capacitor values. I think we'll see if that works. Right, well, all seems to be going good um, after that initial hiccup yesterday. You've got to watch them bloody resistors going high, especially small values like I had a 10 ohm on there. That was the one that went up to 1.9 meg. You've got to watch the buggers. Yep, they're getting a bit. Let's 
yeah that is quite hot actually yeah that's quite hot but not so yeah it's yeah I'm not going to touch that one because I think that's the emitter is the can right well that's all good I'll try and bung the 6BL7 in and see if that stage works okay all is not well that's what we're getting out of one side of the 12BH7 we haven't got the correct HT on there, might be the reason. We're getting a positive voltage on its cathode, so this constant current sink is working. We've got 134 volts on one anode and 200 and something volts on the other anode. I suspect, I mean, basically I've only got like uh, the um, lead in there bodged. Yeah, we've got the opposite there, look. Why that should be, I don't know. We'll try putting in its correct HT voltage. Although I suspect that isn't what the crack is. Yeah. Right, let's, sorry, I'm watching that about. Right, we'll try getting the big power supply out. I've been trying to avoid it, but it's got to be done to put in the right voltages and to save all this uh, wires everywhere and everything. Okay, everything connected, powered up to the big power supply. Voltages of oh, in spec, apart from this one, I thought this should be 350, but it's reading about 370. This is our bias voltages, bias voltage on our grid of our 807s. Uh, we're, something's getting really hot, this dropping resistor probably. Otherwise things are about right. One thing that I might have screwed up on and maybe wrong is this constant current active load here on the DET 20. Might even be better put in a resistor there, I don't think this is any point being there. I'll go into that hopefully at some point. We've got an output, we've got 50 milliamps going in, sorry 50 millivolts going in. This is the output on one of the, uh, where do you call it, on grid one of one of the 807s. Uh, so we've got 0 0.05 volts going into the DEC 20 5.77 volts coming out one of the side of the 12 sorry one side of the 6 BL7 so there's a lot to think about and a lot to watch here got to be careful I don't fuck up okay and we've got 5.779 on the other grid distortion 0.16 that's good everything is good I am now going to turn it off <coughs> because things are getting hot I'm gonna go and connect up the output transformer and fit the 807s oh one other voltage is a bit high and that's the heat voltage is going to the 807s but there's no 807s in there everything is yeah looking good nothing's gone bang so far let's just crank that input up a bit um, amplitude 0 0.3 volts wow as you can see that's just shot up we've now got 34 volts going into the uh, 807 grids which is more than enough to drive it to full power and that's with 0 0.3 volts going into the DEC 20. Let's have a look at the distortion. 0 0.3, that's good. Yeah, so as you can see we're driving that really cleanly and nice. I'm just going to knock that down a bit now. Amplitude 0 0.01 volt. Obviously that knocks it off a bit. 0 0.01 volts. That gives us one volt out. 
at 0.7% THD. Right, I'm going to go and turn this off. Check for heat. It does take a while for the HD to reduce. That'll be better when we've got the 807s in, that will reduce quicker. Everything else, DC conditions about right. I had to change the bias of the cathode on the long tail pair. Uh, that was a bit low at 11 volts. That's still a bit low. I would like it more like zero, oh, sorry, minus 8 volts. No, sorry, 8 volts on the cathode. Sorry, a lot to think about. Yeah, so everything's about right. Everything's good. We're getting there. Having said all that, there's a hell of a lot more to do. Uh, protection circuits to fit. Obviously to put it in its con uh, container, driller holes for the container, wire up the output transformer, etc, etc. Before I finish this video though, I will try and get the 807s connected up and let's see if we can get an output out and see what it looks like. Oh, marvel at the diabolical device. Look at all them frigging wires everywhere. And bing bang boom. We have a lovely output of 1 volt RMS with an input of 10 millivolts. That ain't bad, is it? What sort of distortion we got for a laugh? Ooh, 0.6. Shall we crank it up a bit? Uh, what should we do? Amplitude? No, we won't bang it all the way up. Amplitude. Amplitude 0.1V. That's getting 9 volts out. 2% THD. Okay, but it's not set up properly. Hey, that ain't bad, is it? That ain't bad going, me old cockly doodly. Yeah, I'm waffling. It's that time of the day. Coffee is needed. It works. It lives. Obviously, things ain't biased properly. Minus 29 volts. I haven't set it up properly. Blah, blah, blah. Wires everywhere. But, yeah. So, I thought I had to do that. I had to get it going for you to leave you sort of so you're not hanging you know right we're going to wrap it up for now because this video will be getting quite long by now uh, within terminal ins and outs and what have you let me turn that off so that i can give some more thought to me speech coming out my mouth because otherwise my brain sort of engaged over here and sort of up here as well right I am waffling it is time for some coffee thank you all very much for watching hope you're keeping safe out there in these traumatic times take care of yourselves ta for now